Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin and taking a closer look at whether this could be the start of the bull market when we look back on it in a few years. So if you guys like the content, please go ahead and give the video a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can see future videos and also turn on your alerts. We also do have the Telegram channel in the description below, as well as the premium list if you want access to exclusive content. Let's go ahead and jump in. So many of you guys know about the regression ban, right? That the vi This video is not gonna be about the regression ban, but I just wanna just touch on it really quickly so that you guys, you know, if you're new to the channel, you're, you're aware of, of you know, what it is. It's basically just fit to non-bubble data or logarithmic regression to generally show you know, when is a good time to be accumulating Bitcoin, and then when is a good time to be theoretically selling Bitcoin. Now, one of the things that we've spoken about before with the regression ban, right, and as we, if, we, if we take a, a line and draw it from the previous all-time high over, you can see that we break the previous all-time high, at least last cycle, at around the fair valuation of the regression ban. If we were to do the same thing over here and speculate that it, you know, it would happen at the, around the same, around the same uh, point on the fair value line, it would actually correspond to the end of 2021, beginning of 2022, if you were just to say you would take the regression ban and slowly extend it out. So this, however, obviously is, is longer than, than some people would like to wait because you know a lot of people would prefer, right, that Bitcoin goes to 100K in 2021. I'm right there with you guys. I, I hope it does. I'm just coming to you to say, you know what, it might not, it might take it a little bit longer, you know, as you know, maybe 2022, 2023, 2023 is when I, I think, um, but sometime, you know, around that time frame. Now, one of the things, right, that we need to look at here is, is despite the fact that the momentum has been going up recently, you know, we could easily go into another speculative bubble, right, and then, and then come back down and continue on our merry way, slowly trickling back up to 20K, right? And we know, right, if, we, if you look at historical, the historical patterns, we tend to increase back to the previous all-time high at a slower rate than once we get to the previous all-time high and then continue up on our, our parabolic move. So in the same manner, if we were to just draw a line to the, 20, to the, to the previous all-time high, I would expect us to more or less you know, stay close to this. I mean, we, we, obviously we could go back into a speculative bubble, but I think ultimately we would, we would still continue to slowly trickle up over the next 14 months or so. Now, what we're going to show here is, is, is something actually different. So we're going to go ahead and remove the regression band, okay? We're going to remove all these lines because they're not going to be, you know, they're not going to be used for the purposes of this video anymore. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to remove the price because ultimately speaking, the price is just noise, right? I mean, the price is nothing more than noise. Now, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna add on the 100 week moving average and the 200 week moving average, okay? These are obviously lagging indicators. If I, if I just briefly pull up the price again, you, know, you can see that the, the, the peak here obviously occurs well before the, the peak of, of, that, of that moving average. So it's not like that we can say, okay, the moving average is, is, a, you know, is an instantaneous indicator of, of something immediately happening. By the time that you know these started moving up together, the, the bull market was already in kind of full swing. But what I want to show you, right, is is this convergence here, essentially. Of um, let me go ahead and, and hide that, and we're going to go ahead and add back on the argument so you can see where the you know the, we're looking at the 100 week and the 200 week moving average. Now, one of the things you notice, right, is they the 100 week converged to the 200 week at that point, right. And, and you can also see that during this cycle, we have not done that yet, right? We're still, we're still fairly far away. But if you, if you look to see, okay, well, this was when they came the closest together. But note, the 100-week moving average did not go below the 200-week. Essentially, you could call this, you know, the 100-week the found support on the 200-week. Again, it is a lagging indicator. Now, you can also see that at present times, and we've spoken about this before, about six months ago or so, uh, six months ago or so and we said you know we expect these to continue to converge closer to one another and they've continued to get closer now the question right is are they going to you know to, to ultimately do something like this and if you plot back on the 20 week and the price you can see that the the 20 week was held as support for the first time way back over here so well before we reached that point okay however it was once we reached this point 
if we take a measured move from say like the center point of that region to whenever we cross the previous all time high, so around uh, you know that point right there, it was around 189, 196 days once, we, once this happened. Now, if I show you this overlay here, or not an overlay, it's not an overlay because it's on a different chart, but if we show this, you can see that if you take the ratio of the 100 week and the 200 week, you basically get a value um, for the data that we have on this chart that is between one and two. So it's one because when you divide the 100 week by the 200 week over here, it's essentially one, right? Because they're about, they're about the same. In, you know, in this region over here, they're obviously a lot different, and that's why you can see it go to about two when the 100 week is about twice what the 200 week moving average again, uh, what, the, what the 200 week moving average was. Again, it is a lagging indicator. But the key thing, right, is to note that this is maybe a fundamental shift in the market, you know, another fundamental shift in the market to say, okay, whether you like it or not, it is trending down for a while. And here, saying to the bears, wait, whether you like it or not, we're gonna start trending up. And the same thing again, and then you know potentially something something similar. One of the things you notice though, right, is is this the, the this one was a lot lower than the one over here. And the reason, right, is because we know that the volatility is decreasing. And if the volatility is decreasing, then the 100 week moving average will will you know it won't continue to be as far away from the 200 week as it was in the past. Um, and then we might also project that to the same thing right in terms of um, how close they would get to you know how, how close they might actually come uh, to being together I still think there's a good chance it could, it could come all the way down here um, because ultimately speaking right over over the macro scale um, they will they will tend to be closer together as volatility ultimately reduces so we're looking essentially you know at, at some some convergence right back somewhere in this region now if we you know, we can note here that it took about 189 days. Now, let's, we don't need to look at this anymore, right? You guys, you guys get the idea. Um, so let me just go ahead and, and hide it. Uh, so what I want to show you, and we're going to remove the 20 week as well, and we're also going to remove the price. Now, actually, let me add back on the price really quick, because I, I need to, I need to make one more statement about it. If you, if you go back and you take a, a measured move, 200 weeks, Okay, so this is to get an idea of what the what what will the the 200 week moving average be doing in, in the near term. If you go back 200 weeks, you can see that it, it basically takes you back to when the price of Bitcoin was only $600 and it starts rapidly going up because the current price is at $12,000 or just shy of $12,000. You're essentially every single week you're taking a very low price and replacing it by a much higher price. What does that mean? Well, it means that the 200 week moving average is probably going to start increasing a little bit quicker um, over the next few months. Uh, certainly, it's not going to be going down, obviously, but we, we would expect that it's probably going to start increasing a little bit quicker because we're going to be starting to exclude some of these lower values over here, right? And, and by excluding a lower value and replacing it with a much higher value, then the 200 week moving average is going to start increasing rather quickly. Now, with that in mind, if you if you take a measured move and you look at the 100 week, if you go back 100 weeks, you can see we're around this region. So you know while we're replacing here maybe um, a value of 8,000 to 6,000 with a value of 12,000, the 200 week is 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 actually going to be replacing values that are that are are much lower. Now of course it's it's averaged over a much longer period of time, but just to give you an idea, I would expect. Um, these two, you know, these two moving averages to start to really converge over the next, say, six to eight months, just like they did last time. Now, if we speculate and and you know continue to say draw this out and say you know it, it maybe starts to come up like this a little bit, and then the 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 100 week, you know, increases, but ultimately they get squeezed together, right? And then they then it, then it, it diverges again, and we start going up. Now. If, let's put back on the price, if we were to then show the, this, you know, measuring from the top over and, and speculating that it might happen around this time frame, well, if you, if you look at this, where this was held as support, so the 100 week found support on the 200 week, then it was approximately half a year later when we broke through our previous all time high. And, and, and it's not just breaking through, it was sustainably breaking through. 
And this is what I mean, you know, you can see that we, we broke through it before, but we ultimately fell back down. So when I say, a, when I say December of 2021 or January of 2022 or in that time frame, I'm talking about a sustainable $20,000. We could get to $20,000 much sooner, but I don't think it would be sustainable. So if we were to repeat last cycle, but keeping in, keeping in mind that it's going to be a lengthening cycle, right? Because these, these processes are just going to take longer and longer each cycle, then perhaps we would see the convergence of these two right around this area. And then if we were to take, say, a measured move from this point, about half a year out or so, probably a little bit longer, you can see that it would put us, you know, around the end of 2021, early 2022 to be, you know, to be potentially working our way slowly up to our previous all-time high. And then hopefully we'll start to go a little bit more parabolic, meaning we'll start moving up the, the price ladder a lot quicker than we have been. Um, so this is the general idea, right? You know, the, the, same, the same idea. Now, the thing is, right, is, is we know that the 20-week moving average was held as support before this, you know, and it was held as support, uh, you know, approximately, you know, two-thirds of a year before. So it's possible that, you know, we're also going to hold hold the 20 week moving average as support, uh, you know, sometime in this in this region, it, you know, the, the, the 20 week moving average is moving up rather quickly. It, it's not going to take very many weeks for it to even break 10K itself, as long as Bitcoin continues to slowly move up as it has been. So the thing is, right, is we don't know if the bull market has started. We don't know if the 20 week is going to hold us support. But it seems like, you know, there's at least a decent chance that we are in the beginning stages of, you know, when we look back at the market cycle in, say, 2023 and imagine, you know, the price, the price continues to to slowly. Uh, let me draw that a little bit better. Let me first draw where the target is. So if the target is, say, you know, summer of 2023 at around, let's say, one hundred and twenty thousand dollars. So in this region, then. You know, at this point, we would start to go a little bit more parabolic, right? And, and then ultimately go to our next paradigm shift in the market. And then we might look back and say, oh, well, this made sense. We repeated the same cycle. We saw the 100 week moving average converge down to the 200 week, essentially hold it as support, like we saw the last time. Also saw the 20 week hold as support uh, before that happened. And, and it was the bull market. We had the golden cross, we had the 20 week held it as support. And then Bitcoin continued to just climb and climb and climb despite all the disbelief that existed in the market. This is obviously a possible scenario, right? This is, there's a decent chance that we look back and this is exactly, or something similar to what eventually ends up happening, okay? So I just wanted to kind of elucidate some of my thoughts on, on where I could see the market going, uh, looking at, at this indicator uh, to, try to, to try to say, you know what, maybe, maybe we're gonna see, see something similar where it comes back down and then we slowly just trickle back up like we did last time. Uh, so again, you know, if you if you put back on the um, the the regression band, so if we go to our, our our regression lines here, you know, you can see that we're still theoretically within our, our accumulation range, within our fair value uh, accumulation range, because if you if you just generally zoom out, so if we zoom all the way out here, you can see, you know, there's there's these obvious accumulation regions down there, right here, and then this one. And then there's, there tends to be these sell regions where you want to where you want to sell it uh, based on historical data, and it's going to continue to not go up as quickly. So it'll continue to the 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 rate at which this climbs is is obviously uh, decreasing. So I would expect it you know to continue on out something like that. I hope that makes sense. If you guys like the content, I will remind you that we do have a premium list, and as we continue on doing the market cycle, more of my content will be uh, for exclusive uh, members of the premium list and less of it for the public YouTube channel. I'm still going to post public videos, you know, for, for years, but I'm just saying it'll be it'll be less and less as, as the years go on during the market cycle. The prices are going to go up soon. So probably, you know, in a few weeks, the prices are going to be going up. If you want to get grandfathered in at the current price, then I would suggest that you, you check it out now because once the prices go up, you cannot get back in at that lower price. You would have to pay the higher price from then on out. But if you're in now, then you're grandfathered in and prices will not go up on you. If you're curious what you get by being on the premium list, it's at intothecryptoverse.com, you get four primary things, okay? You get a weekly premium report, you get a weekly premium video to go along with the report. In addition, you get access to an alerts channel where I candidly tell you kind of my thoughts on the markets, 
not just cryptocurrency. We talk about stocks. We talk about precious metals. We talk about, you know, a lot of things under the sun, right? So there, there's an alerts channel. I also tell you about, you know, what I see the market doing, uh, the risk levels that I trade on. So I, I trade based on the risk levels of the coins. These are, these are uh, things that I developed. And you'll even get access to the live risk dashboard so that you can, you can just have access to it whenever you want. And you can even export the risk values to your own, to your own dashboard. So then you can, you can kind of see where we are in the grand scheme of the market cycle. If you really like the, uh, this, uh, this type of content and you, and you want to, you know, pay for more than just a month at a time, which, you know, you can pay with fiat. If you would prefer, you can pay with crypto. And if you do 12 months, if you do six or 12 months, you get a discount. And if you do 12 months, you get a 15% discount. Uh, so it's a pretty significant discount. It's obviously the best value getting 15% off. Uh, but if you'd rather do monthly, you can do that as well. So I hope you guys check it out. If you have questions, you can always join the uh, join the public Telegram group. You can ask people questions, figure out if it's the right thing for you. Uh, but a lot of people are finding value in it. We have several hundred members on the premium list. So if you want access to it and you want to get it and you want to get grandfathered in at the prices that it is now, then I would encourage you to go ahead and sign up so that you can so that you can go ahead and get access and then you can continue paying that. And of course, if you if you don't find value in it, then you can cancel and it's it's not a big deal either way. Um, but at least do check it out if you guys like the content and you and you like the perspective I provide on the markets. With that said, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel, give the video a thumbs up, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.